Hello, and welcome to our second podcast on instructional coaching. Thank you again for taking the time in your busy day to join us here at Edgehill University. Tom Sherrington and Oliver Caviglioli draw attention to the professional amnesia teachers often experience with policy initiatives, leaving them to reinvent the wheel in teaching. So we thought in today's coaching sprint, we would step back a moment to ask, what is instructional coaching? And what, if anything, is different about it? You will hear some key ideas. Along the way, we will explore some of the key research making this form of mentoring a hot topic on teachers' social media. Whether you are new to instructional coaching or already use it to support early career teachers, we hope you will find something that interests you and makes your time here worthwhile. Mentoring or coaching, what's the difference? Traditionally, in English schools, mentoring and coaching in teacher professional development deploy similar skills, but are differentiated by why and when professional learning takes place and with whom. Mentoring is defined as a structured, sustained process for supporting professional learners through significant career transitions. Mentoring was more likely to be used on entry to the profession, for example, with a trainee. In contrast, coaching is defined as a structured, sustained process for enabling the development of a specific aspect of a professional learner's practice. The use of coaching is more targeted and supports ongoing professional development. The idea of mentoring trainee teachers by an expert colleague using instructional coaching brings these two approaches together. Instructional coaching. So what's new? Tom Sherrington and Oliver Caviglioli highlight key differences between Knight's approach to instructional coaching, which began in the US, and other models available to teachers in the UK context. Executive, or life coaching, is facilitative. This works from the assumption that the teacher already knows what to do. Directive coaching similar to sports coaching, would assume that the teacher doesn't know what to do. Alternatively, in line with best practice principles, instructional coaching starts from the premise that the coach has the expert knowledge to improve the skills of the teacher being coached. Instructional coaching's ethos is dialogical. The teacher, trainee and coach work together as partners to develop a shared understanding of how to adapt teaching to meet learning needs. For Sherrington and Caviglioli, instructional coaching has the following key benefits. Gives access to expert knowledge and develops professional autonomy or agency. Instructional coaches partner teachers to help them incorporate research-based instructional practices into their teaching. In Jim Knight's words, collaboration is the lifeblood of instructional coaching. Adaptive coaching, the Goldilocks principle. Josh Goodrich runs a lively blog on coaching. He has drawn attention to how popular teaching guides often use very directive or prescriptive models. For example, Paul Bambrick Santoyo's Leverage Leadership 2.0 follows the prescriptive see it name it, do it approach. Goodrich points to the important process of first diagnosing the expertise level of the mentee and then deciding on an action that is just right. He calls this the Goldilocks principle. High quality instructional coaching is adaptive. An instructional coach is aware that a mentee's learning needs change over time and can vary according to the task and the context. It takes a graduated developmental approach. Coaching is responsive to the expertise level of the teacher. Knight argues that because of this, there is a strong ethical basis for instructional coaching. It is a partnership that allows the teacher trainee a voice in the process. Praxis the philosophy of instructional coaching. What is non-negotiable 
is that the teaching strategies used in mentoring as an instructional coach are research informed. Jim Knight says that what is new is that instructional coaches partner with teachers to help them incorporate research-based practices effectively into their teaching. But, he recalls Riley, when a teacher says, that's great in theory, an idea is given the kiss of death. Teachers often criticize professional development as being too theoretical, which for many teachers is synonymous with impractical. Yet, theories are a very practical means of organizing and making sense of our lives. As the saying goes, there is nothing as practical as a good theory. Therefore, instructional coaching specializes in supporting teachers and trainees to put theory into practice a process of so-called praxis. The idea is that learning becomes meaningful if evidence-informed ideas are applied to real life. Applying theory to practice is the philosophy of instructional coaching. But, some of you might be thinking now, that's great in theory, but... The teaching habit and the challenge of change. We agree Bringing about any change in teaching is very difficult. Developing effective habits is essential to avoid cognitive overload and makes teaching in complex situations possible. But this also means that the everyday practice of teaching itself can quickly become habitual. Research shows that the habits teachers develop are far more powerful than what they know or what they believe in determining their actions. This means bad habits can override conscious, deliberate intentions. And so, habit formation plays an important part in limiting and inhibiting growth in teacher effectiveness. Any professional development program that relies only on the transmission of knowledge about pedagogical techniques are very likely to fail to develop practice. For Doug Lemov, author of the popular guide Teach Like a Champion, this research means it is vital to encode success, to use effective strategies from the start and to practice repeatedly. Change needs frequency. It is a well-established idea that to make teacher learning stick, it must be sustained over a long time. So, Sam Sims and Harry Fletcher Woods Their latest research is important in revealing it is the frequency of practice rather than the actual period of time spent that is the key to success. To change practice requires the repeated use of a new technique or approach in a realistic or near realistic classroom environment. As cognitive science shows that repeatedly practicing a new technique in the environment where you aim to reproduce it in future, i.e. the classroom, helps replace old habits by overwriting the established cue-response relationships. The mechanism of repeated practice within a cycle of observation and feedback is what instructional coaching is about. So, it appears this is why there is compelling evidence of impact. Practice with purpose. The time available has to be used productively with purpose as it is the quality of practice that makes the difference. American educators, deans for impact, have become increasingly influential in educational policy in England. They identify five key steps to be taken by teacher educators to support deliberate practice by trainees. The first two steps you will be familiar with in quality mentoring. One, push beyond, identify the right level of challenge. Two, define specific goals. The next three steps are given a particular emphasis based upon cognitive science. Three, intensify the focus. So isolate a specific teaching technique to develop, encourage approximate practice in a low stakes environment, including outside the classroom. Four, respond to feedback. In response to high quality feedback that focuses on the goal to be achieved, The trainee teacher makes the adjustment. Five, developing mental models. Deliberate practice relies on mental models of how pupils and students learn. Deliberate practice develops and reinforces them. 
developmental models are used to monitor and self-evaluate. So, what is different about instructional coaching? The coach actively promotes deliberate practice of research-informed teaching strategies. Time for coaching scripts. At this point, we understand you might be thinking, how do I have the time for all of this and where do I get the research-informed strategies? In our experience, instructional coaching is a process that builds upon what you already do and simply adapts it. And there are now resources available to save you time. For example, teaching scripts or checklists set out the key steps informed by research to be followed for a particular teaching technique or aspect of pedagogy. One idea that is proving very popular in thousands of schools are walkthroughs. These visual scripts can be adapted and help focus coaching and manage time. We encourage you to have a look to see what is possible. The link is given in the presentation. These resources are designed to be adapted to suit your coaching. The expert coach, putting and keeping it all together. Today, we have outlined just some of the key ideas that are making instructional coaching interesting to Edge Hill University mentors. This final slide shows some coaching sprints to come that will talk you through practical ideas to support deliberate practice, ensuring you and your trainee can make the most of the time you have. Our very first podcast gave evidence for impact. So the third coaching sprint will take you through how to do instructional coaching in practice step by step, giving ideas you can easily adapt to what you're already doing as an Edge Hill University mentor. We look forward to you joining us again.